It hit record and then hit unrecord, so I just talked for 10 minutes to my fucking self. Hi, and welcome to this weird corner of the internet called Period Nirvana, where I review and talk about reusable menstrual products. If you're into that sort of thing, be sure to subscribe. Period Nirvana is where you're gonna find all of my best educational content. So if you're looking on how to use a product or if you want a review of a product, check here first. If you go to periodnirvana.com, you'll also be able to take my amazing, well thought out quiz that's going to help you find the right menstrual cup or disc for you. You answer either a few questions if you're new or a lot of questions if you're experienced and it really walks you into something that is hopefully the perfect fit. I am also a retailer, so I started the first curated boutique style reusable menstrual product store in the US. It's called period.shop. If you are looking for trusted brands, definitely check that out and we take HSA. This is gonna be part history lesson, part cup review, but mostly history lesson. So if you're a nerd like me, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Look at this exciting box. Isn't that beautiful? So I say this is a history lesson because if you are new to menstrual cups, you probably have never heard of the brand Keeper. And if you are someone who is a seasoned old school menstrual cup user, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but chances are you probably haven't tried it and we'll talk about that. But it is the cup that started the modern menstrual cup industry. They say that proudly on their website that hasn't been updated since 2014, but it is a true fact that without the keeper, we wouldn't have Diva Cup or Moon Cup. And without Diva Cup and Moon Cup, we wouldn't have the incredible array of amazing, innovative, uh, customizable kinds of menstrual cups that we have today that fit basically every need there is. We're really not missing anything on the market because each cup addresses very specific needs and it all started with the Keeper Cup and a very basic bullet shaped design. This video is really where my history degree and advanced Googling skills shine because I really dove into uh, a lot of different resources, just simply, you know, Google Scholar. I looked at mum.org, which is the menstruation museum that is run by Harry Finley. It's an old website, but it has a ton of really interesting content. And because it was run and updated during the times when Keeper Cup and uh, instead Soft Cup were first starting out, it has a lot of information on these products. And of course, I just used the Wayback Internet Archive where you can look at any brand's website from uh, a snapshot in time. So if they had a website in 1999, chances are you can see exactly what was on that website. I think a lot of people don't know about this tool. And I think this cat's going to completely cover my black jacket and hair. So thank you for that. She's starved for attention right now, apparently. Before we go into the history side, which I'm like super stoked about, let's just see the cup in question. It's, it's this one, it's rubber. It is made from natural rubber and um, it does typically have a longer stem. I had to trim it to, to try it and I didn't buy two. So the one that you're seeing here is the one that I tried. Um, and it's really, the most basic of shapes and um, the most basic of materials, the most basic of cups, um, that's it. The keeper comes in two sizes and this really gets confusing. I, I, as an educator, get very frustrated by the lack of standardized terminology in the industry and keeper has a little bit to do with that because guess what their size A is? Their size A is not small. Their size A is afterbirth. Ugh. It's just the worst term. And then their size B is before birth or if you're under 30. And so this is incredibly confusing. We're used to size one or size A being a small and size uh, B or two to be large. And that came later. Um, so other brands decided on that and they kind of went against what Keeper established as a brand, even though it was the first modern cup with the two sizes. Um, so everyone went away from this idea, which is a good thing, but it has had some lasting impact. A few brands also use this and I have to be very careful because I get confused knowing so many brands, which one is AB and which one is BA. So that's a whole other can of worms, but they do have a small and a large. 
Now we're going on a little bit of a journey, a history journey, and I'll continue this while petting my cat. So if my arms are doing weird things, that's why. <laughs> Let's go all the way back to the very first modern minstrel cup. It was developed in the 1930s and you can go to periodnirvana.com and search for my history article to get a really full look at this history as well as going to mum.org, which was a resource I relied very heavily on. But the first minstrel cup is either the Leona Chalmers version or the Dane Tet. It depends on who you ask. Leona Chalmers gets a lot of credit in all of the articles and, and you know content about the very first modern minstrel cup because she had a very long lasting career in the minstrel industry, which we'll talk about and it relates very directly to Keeper. But she um, was also very good at marketing. She wrote an entire book and part of it is basically talking about how great minstrel cups are in the 1930s, which is just such a radical thing to think about. And before that, there was an earlier patent before her patent was filed for a cup that ultimately did become commercially available called the Daintet. It was actually a sold MLM style. So like for all the Huns out there, you could become a Hun for uh, menstrual cups and sell these products to all of your friends. So if you went to a Tupperware party for, for these personal care products, they also sold some not so great things like douches, um, unnecessary products, but uh, they sold the cup, the Daintet, and there was another one called Foldeen, uh, very similar design. So we don't actually know if the Daintet was first or the Chalmers cup, but Chalmers always is cited as the first modern minstrel cup. In the 1950s, Leona Chalmers improved on her first patent after very little success. Chalmers saw a classified ad placed in the Wall Street Journal, and they were asking for interesting ideas. This ad was placed by a man named Robert Oreck, and he was looking for a new company to develop with his three sons. So Chalmers pitched her cup, and he was definitely hesitant to get into the uh, hygiene menstrual space, uh, him and his three sons. However, his wife Shirley tried the Tasset cup, and she loved it. So he did actually sign on to... Uh, develop this product and a company around the product. He also kind of bought Leona Chalmers as a spokesperson, as a consultant, and she's a big part of uh, the Keeper story as we continue on, so I want to make sure we mention that. She sold her design, Tasset came out with it, it didn't do so great, although they did do some major advertising, including a billboard in Times Square. You know, it did eventually fail due to the wartime rubber shortages and the introduction of tampons, and those were invented in the 1930s as well. Tampons marketed as a single-use convenient, discreet option, and of course they had applicators which they also marketed as being cleaner and more convenient. So this definitely set the stage for Americans to consider cups as less convenient and less discreet. In the 1970s, Tasset gave it one more try. Of course, the tampons were already more popular, so they came at it in a different way. In 1969, they tried again with a more convenient option. Their idea was for a disposable cup, and they called it the Tassaway. This cup was made from a plastic-like material that was allegedly water-soluble. And it's not that the cup didn't succeed. They actually did do some advertising. They had uh, full-page magazine ads. It's that um, the company went under for financial reasons. And even though they did have a lot of loyal cup users and a lot of success, they could never ever be profitable. It just was not a profitable business and they had too much money in it. So the company ceased operations by 1973 due to their low profits and things that seem very shady in uh, some of the, the stockholder options they were doing. Um, maybe falsely inflating their value it seems very much like a story that could have happened today. So that company ultimately shut down and with that company shutting down, all menstrual cups were gone from the world. We couldn't find a menstrual cup. Menstrual cups did not exist. Uh, Leona Chalmers didn't have a company making cups. The Daintet and the Foldeen no longer existed and Tassaway, which was the disposable cup that they came out with, was gone. So that whole industry was was had vanished. And this is where we get into the Keeper's origin story because the founder, Lou Crawford, was a former Tasset Cup user and wanted these products to exist again. And so the story as it is written online of the Keeper Cup origin 
is that Lou Crawford wanted to bring the product back and so she went to the family and the family is never identified but it really seems to be the Chalmers family, not the Tassette owners, the Oric family. And she wanted to take Leon Chalmers' concept and work with them to bring it back. I don't know if that was gonna be through the Tassette brand or through Chalmers um, or through a new brand that they were going to create together. Ultimately, the Chalmer family, which I'm assuming it's the Chalmer family, said, thanks, but no thanks. We like that you're gonna bring it back, but we don't really wanna be involved, but good luck with that. And on that note, Lou Crawford went and designed what we now know as the Keeper Cup, modeling it very much after the, the Chalmers Cup. If you compare the, the product design, the rim, the little straight down notch in, taper down stem, all of that is very reminiscent of the original cup. And it's like that because it's it was a cup that worked. Um, the Chalmers Cup said it was soft rubber. Um, the Keeper Cup describes itself as soft rubber. And they also consulted with gynecologists to create that design. Now we have the Keeper Cup. They established themselves as a company and began selling somewhere around 1987. I don't know if that's the company starting or when they sold products at first but we have a date of 1987 of when the Keeper Cup started. There were no menstrual cups available to anyone for almost two decades until the Keeper Cup started. So uh, this was a hole in the product industry that Lou Crawford identified as someone who loved it, couldn't get her own and decided to start a company. I think it's a great origin story. I don't think it's something where it, she, she did everything right. She went to the founders and said, hey, do you wanna be part of it? They said, no. And so she took over as the new minstrel cup in town. And that status was completely uncontested for really almost another two decades. They had a very long run as the only minstrel cup in town. Instead of people creating other cups, most of it, people who were minstrel cup fans just decided to become distributors and help Keeper Cup sell cups. It wasn't until Diva Cup and Moon Cup both decided to create a new version of the Minstrel Cup that we finally see some competition for the Keeper Cup. The Keeper Cup had what I would call a cult-like following for a while. All the things that were ripe for making Keeper a popular option were there. We have environmentalism, we have feminism, um, that stuff is there. And so they did really well for a good while. They never disclosed their sales number. Um, and, but there is a New York Times article about them as basically the only minstrel cup besides the later introduced Instead Soft Cup, which you know I'm gonna tell you is not actually a minstrel cup, it's a minstrel disc. At the time, they called it a minstrel cup. So in 2002, one of the distributors of the Keeper Cup in the UK who would buy and sell the Keeper Cup, they decided to create their own cup um, and that cup was created because the, 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 the distributor and the founder of Moon Cup had a latex allergy. And of course, if you are using a natural rubber product, you have a latex allergy, you're not gonna be able to use it. So she came up with the idea of using medical grade silicone for her cup. She had a new design. That cup is still in production today. The Moon Cup, the Moon Cup added some grips to the design and on the stem, which is very helpful for removal. Um, but it's very much shaped like the original Keeper Cup. At basically the same time behind the scenes, another company is coming in and developing their own version of the Minstrel Cup. And I think you can probably guess who that is, and that's Diva Cup. So Diva Cup was a distributor of Keeper Cup, the uh, mother and daughter team. So Francine and Corrine, they were distributors. They sold it in America and the US on their website, which I believe was just keeper.com and they switched to selling their new product, the Diva Cup. And the Diva Cup was a little more of a departure from the Keeper Cup design, um, way more tapered, way shorter stem, longer body, um, a less pronounced rim, and a lot softer in the firmness being medical grade silicone. So um, they first started selling them side by side. You can go on my website and see some of this history, which is interesting, but it was by the Keeper here, by the Diva Cup here. And then eventually they said, by Keeper, just by the Diva Cup. And then they were basically like, hey, just go to the divacup.com. We know how the story kind of ends. Most people haven't heard of the Keeper Cup. And it's sort of like a relic 
of time, but it's still operational. You can still buy it. I just bought one a couple weeks ago. So the Keeper Cup had the market. They are the originators of the modern menstrual cup, but yet they are just sort of in the background of history. A lot of hardcore menstrual nerds, if that's a term that exists, like myself, who love the history of the product and like to watch the innovation down the timeline, know about the cup. I tried the cup years ago when I was a new menstrual cup user because it was one of the very few brands available. Even in 2000, I guess, nine, when I started using menstrual cups, your options were primarily Diva Cup. Most people had heard of Diva Cup first. Keeper Cup, and it was um, also sold in silicone by that point called Moon Cup. It's a whole other story. <laughs> I'm sure there's some great backstory to that as well. Um, and Lunette, which was a, basically a brand new brand at the time from Finland. It was another silicone cup, medical grade silicone cup. And um, I picked the Diva Cup because it was the most well-known. Later, I went and tried the Keeper. So there are a lot of reasons that I think explain why Keeper is not as well-known as the Diva Cup or even the Moon Cup. I can actually go to Google Trends, and I'll throw up a graphic right now. Um, Diva Cup has, since its early days, been synonymous with the word menstrual cup. Often people say they use a diva cup and they mean a menstrual cup. They're actually using a lunette or a salt or, um, you know, a, a, a lina cup or a hello cup. They're not using a diva brand. It's just like Kleenex. It's like roller blades. Kleenex is to facial tissue. Roller blades is to inline skates. Diva cup is to menstrual cup. That's actually changing um, on the trends. The lines are moving apart. We have so many options but they had a lock on the menstrual cup market for a really long time. And part of it's being early to the game, part of it's great marketing. Um, they were early internet entrepreneurs, I'd say. They had websites before most businesses had websites. They were selling online. Uh, Keeper Cup was also early. They were online. They were selling through the website. They were taking phone orders. <laughs> they were taking mail orders. Um, what's interesting is that Keeper was like a 65 US dollar today cup with inflation when they first launched. But because we have so much competition between other unique brands, but also this massive influx of white label, private label cups that are um, driving down the costs in the market. So let's talk about the product just a little bit, because really this is just an excuse for me to ramble on about the history of menstrual cups. Um, I The unboxing was just not fun compared to many other products. I mean, it's environmentally friendly. You can very easily recycle this box. That's always a plus. I think they've always been a, a you know, eco-driven brand for waste reasons. Um, it only came with this one sheet of instructions, which is just a whole lot of words with a few basic pictures. It looks like something you would get faxed over. And in fact, the copyright on the instructions is 2013. And it very, very clearly is not keeping up with um, the inclusivity vibe that we have going on online in, in the world where menstrual products are now making sure that it's inclusive for everyone who menstruates, which is not always women. Women menstruate, but also some women don't menstruate. Some men menstruate. We have uh, trans men who will use menstrual cups and the designed by a woman, manufactured by women, marketed by women, for women, uh, is possibly the most <laughs> exclusive copy on any menstrual cup brand I've ever seen. Uh, the box has a blue bag on the back. You actually don't get a blue bag, you get a white. Um, plain as plain can be bag, which, you know, isn't terrible, but a lot of brands offer really nice looking bags. Um, I actually still have my blue bag from my old keeper. My old keeper that I had used originally, um, it melted. Uh, I had it for many years and I found it again and it was kind of melted, so can't try that. Um, but I still have the bag. Now, when it comes to using this product, I did physically try it out. It is sort of a review as well right now. I haven't tried the original menstrual cup since I first started using menstrual cups. I remember it being a lot firmer than it actually is, so I'm going to try it once again and just to update my opinions on it. And um, my review is that it wasn't as bad as I expected. 
not expecting anything exciting for this removal. It's just a regular cup, but it's rubber and pretty firm. That rim is pretty routine. <laughs> but it's nothing amazing either. Um, it is less, less firm than I remember it being. I remember when I tried it almost 10 years ago, I could barely even get it folded to insert. So at least I can fold this one to insert. I don't know if the hardness came um, from me being less experienced and interpreting it as harder than it is really, um, or if I had a bad batch and it was a harder rubber, or if rubber is harder to make consistently the same firmness, unlike silicone, um, or maybe I got an old product that had been on the shelves already for years and had starting, you know, had started to harden. Um, whatever it was, my first one was very hard and this one is not as hard. Um, it's still firm. If I were to say like on a firmness scale, you know, you've got soft, soft, and you've got firm, firm. Keeper is firm, firm. But I used to kind of even rate it higher than firm, firm. It was the hardest cup on the market. And now having given uh, another shot, I'd say it's just firm, firm. It's just firm cup, firm, 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 firm. Um, I did have to trim the stem off to use it because the stem is too long for me. And it's, um, it worked just fine when I was using it. It was comfortable. It Physically, it didn't leak. There was no leakage. And um, putting it in was harder because it's firmer. That's always going to be the case for firmer cups. They're harder to insert and keep folded because they want to they want to unfold as you're putting them in. You kind of have a lot of dexterity to use a firmer cup. Um, but then it like, poof, really pops. This cup really pops. Um, and then you also have the removal process, which because it's such a thick rim, I kind of guided it down, angled to make sure it wasn't uncomfortable for me. Um, I wouldn't personally pick this any day of the week. I find silicone to be more comfortable. Uh, a lot of people have latex allergies, so they can't use a rubber cup. But um, review-wise, there's not a lot of bad things to say, and there's not a lot of good things. It just is not a cup I would personally use. Um, it just feels old-fashioned, which I don't know how to say it any other way. It just feels like it's an older style of cup. Um, and even though Moon Cup is still around and it's basically a keeper with some grips, um, it just feels more old fashioned. This is the silicone version of the same keeper cup in the smaller size. The keeper also has suction holes underneath the rim instead of closer to the top of the rim. I am not bothered by this, but I think a lot of consumers assume if your suction holes are down lower, it will leak faster. Menstrual blood is not thick enough to get through these holes the way you think. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about leakage with the holes being lower, um, but certainly many consumers find that if the holes are at the top, it's going to leak less. And I totally understand that, you know, rationale, um, but I wouldn't be concerned about the, the holes being down here. Um, the other thing that is off-putting about Keeper as a cup is that it is poop emoji brown. And it has this chalky white film that to me just feels not clean. Um, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, I think all of the rubbers will have that kind of chalkiness to it, even when it's a brand new product. But there's just something that doesn't feel good about it, something that doesn't look good about it. And so I can see why Diva Cup and Moon Cup became more popular when you're comparing it to a brown rubber uh, cup medical grade silicone has this confidence. It has this cleanliness that you feel everything is, you know, bacteria free. You can boil it. You can't boil a rubber cup. It's in their instructions. You're not supposed to boil it. Um, there's just a lot of things against it. So, you know, I don't know personally why Keeper, even when they introduced a silicone cup, uh, their, their moon cup, why it didn't keep up with Diva Cup in popularity. And of course now, Diva Cup is the premier cup. We associate it with cups. So Keeper just couldn't keep up. They didn't update their branding. They didn't update their product. They didn't update their website. They haven't updated it since 2014. Uh, when companies stop updating their websites or stop posting their blog posts, you just feel like they're skating into oblivion. They're not doing what they need to do to keep up. Um, I don't even know how exactly they're continuing to exist as a brand right now. 
Um, I give them all the credit in the world for creating this modern menstrual cup industry. Um, I actually reached out to ask them some questions and some of my research and no one responded. So as much as I'd like to present some of their own opinions about um, some of the things I asked, uh, I didn't get a response back. So they're either not rep replying on purpose or they uh, just aren't checking their contact forms at all. Um, which is another vote of no confidence in the brand, um, in my opinion, although I don't always have the ability to get back to everyone who reaches out to me. So counterpoint, uh, sometimes things are very busy. But I think we're wrapping up. I shared my review. I shared the history. I hope it was interesting. Uh, definitely check out the periodnirvana.com history roundup. I'll link that because it's just full of interesting information. And then additionally, check out mom.org for a lot of hard to find, but very valuable research about the period product industry with menstrual cups and discs being part of that history. Um, it's a really cool resource. It's a very weird story, um, but I am personally a big fan. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to follow on Instagram at period nirvana and on TikTok at period nirvana for shorter how-to clips and reviews and you can always join the period nirvana community on facebook i'll leave a link for that in the video description as well we'll see you in the next one and now i'm going to go lint roll myself because my cat has decided to cuddle all day in this video <laughs> bye bye that when oh god i'm covered in hair oh my god it's disgusting oh my god it's so disgusting oh my god I mean, it's bad. It's really bad. Uh, the, but, but.